So today I want to just briefly run through the steps of what you need to know when you're considering the Turkish Citizenship by Investment Program. Hey everyone, welcome back. This is Justin Mays with Prime Property Turkey. Uh, and last week I promised you that we would cover Turkish citizenship by investment, uh, especially after we covered the uh, how to buy a property. So today I wanna just briefly run through the steps of what you need to know uh, when you're considering the Turkish citizenship by investment program. So the first thing that we need to do, obviously, and we talked about this last time, is identifying the property. Okay, uh, what we need to do here is we need to make sure that the property is going to A, be more expensive than $250,000, and two, it's going to appraise for more than $250,000. But let me clarify, this can be multiple properties. This doesn't have to be one property. We can break this into two properties. We can break this into three properties. As long as the price and the appraisals are over 250,000 US dollars. So that's the most important thing. So anytime that you're discussing with the agency that you are uh, working with about the Citizenship by Investment Program is you need to make sure that in total, we're surpassing the $250,000. Here's some things to always keep in mind, and I'm gonna bounce back and forth here because it's the only way to really kind of relay the information that's necessary. So we've got the $250,000, and everyone says, I wanna pay exactly $250,000. That's fantastic. But the reality of the situation is, is that there's new rules that have been passed where you must deposit the money into the bank and you must get a slip from the central bank with that day's exchange rate. So if you pay today uh, and the bank receives it two days from now and the exchange rate has changed, we may or may not be over that 250,000 US dollar threshold. So we always say give yourself just a little bit of wiggle room in case there's some uh, slight changes or differentiations in the currency. Uh, I'm not saying you have to go spend 260 or 270 or 280,000 dollars. I'm just saying give yourself a few thousand dollars of wiggle room room just to make sure that we don't run into problems later. So let's talk a little bit about the requirements. We talked about how uh, you must you know, spend over $250,000 and we have to have this uh, uh, exchange rate receipt from the central bank when we're processing it. But let's go from the initial stages, okay? We've paid the $250,000. Now the next thing that's going to happen is we're going to apply for the uh, appraisal. The appraisal takes three to four days uh, it's an independent uh, sanctioned surveyor who comes out, appraises the property, gives the report, uh, tells you in dollar terms what it's worth, etc. It's important that you ask who you're dealing with if they have any idea. Do they have any previous appraisal reports so you know that you're not going to run into a situation where you purchase the property, it's the one that you want, and then the appraisal doesn't come back. Uh, you know, in a secondhand house, we don't really have any way of knowing, uh, so there are some variables in that. Uh, we can have it appraised up to three times to try to see what the value will come out, uh, but typically one appraisal, especially if the agency knows what they're doing, is, is more than sufficient. So we've received the appraisal, it comes back and it says, okay, uh, everything's good to go as far as the value, the tax declaration, etc. Now you're going to transfer the money in full. We have two ways of doing this now, especially with the new guidelines. So number one, uh, you transfer the money to the bank account that you've established here in Turkey in US dollars. This is very, very important now because we have to exchange it from foreign currency to Turkish Lira. We must send it in USD to the account. When you open up the bank accounts in Turkey, you have the option of the US dollar account, the Euro account, sometimes a British pounds account, uh, and the, the Turkish Lira account. So what we're gonna do is once that foreign currency hits the bank account, the bank is then going to sell that foreign currency to the central bank. This is where it's gonna generate that form that gives the exchange rate for that day and gives us the slip that we now need for the citizenship process. Once that is completed, then the money can be forwarded on to the developer. Now let's assume that you're purchasing online and you haven't been able to open a bank account in Turkey. 
we can then send the money directly to the developer into their foreign currency account in foreign currency and the developer then has to go through these steps. So there's two options and it gives us a little bit of leeway depending on if you're here or if you're uh, buying from a, a distance. So that's important to know. So we've got this, we've applied, we've done the, uh, we've done the bank transfer, they've received the funds, we've got the slip from the central bank, everything's good to go. Next part is applying for the title deed. So the attorney that you're working with should be applying for the title deed. Uh, this process takes typically two to three days. Now, I will state that if it's an under construction process, uh, excuse me, project, this process can take two to three weeks uh, because oftentimes they have to receive the money, give the money to the government. Government then in turn releases, releases the title deed. And so uh, there can be some fluctuations, but again, the agency should be able to give you this information ahead of time and let you know so there's no issues here uh, with you obtaining that title deed. So once we get the title deed, uh, we've signed for it. The most important step then is that the attorney uh, applies for the certificate of conformity. What this does, it's a document from the Turkish government that is stating that the process for the Turkish citizenship has been followed. The 250, the tax declaration, the transmittal, etc. This means that at that point you have a three-year hold on your property. So you can't sell it within three years of the time that that certificate of conformity is issued because that is part of the stipulations of the Turkish Citizenship by Investment Program is that you must maintain that property for three years. So once that certificate of conformity is issued, the attorney can then go on to issuing your residency or applying for your residency. This typically takes two to three weeks, can take a month uh, with COVID. There is a little bit of a backlog, but we're seeing that they're starting to really empty that backlog, especially in this past month. Uh, so we've been getting them back in about two to three weeks average. Don't take my words verbatim on that as it does change from district to district, uh, but that's what we're seeing on average. Once you receive the residency back, then we can apply for the citizenship process. Who does the citizenship process cover? It covers the buyer, the spouse, and any children under the age of 18. If you are running into a situation where you know the child's going to turn 18 within three to four months, uh, it, it's imperative that you definitely have all of your ducks in a row, all of your paperwork ready to go, so the moment you purchase the property, we can go ahead and file the applications as necessary to try to get that done in a timely manner. Uh, this is why I mentioned in my previous video that we introduce the attorney very early on in the process, uh, that the documentation is the most important tool. So please make sure that you're working with an attorney, working with an agency that has an attorney provided, uh, that is involved very early on, that is engaged, that is proactive, uh, because just slight delays can set you back several months in this process. So please, 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 again, make sure to follow that and, and, and understand who you're working with, who you're dealing with, how, how expeditious they are, and how eager they are to assist and help. So we filed the citizenship application. From there, you're going to get an application number. This application number will kind of guide you along the way. There's 10 steps in the process. First two, three steps go boom, boom, boom. The fourth step unfortunately, is the National Background Investiga Investigation. Uh, and it does take some time, of course. Uh, so you're gonna be really excited. The first couple are gonna go very quickly and then the fourth step kind of drags along for a few weeks. Perfectly normal, perfectly natural, uh, but do feel free to engage your attorney and, and make sure that everything's good to go. Uh, because again, you're the buyer, you're the applicant, you have the right uh, to check in and understand what's going on in the process. So once we get through the four step, again, five, six, seven, eight, nine, go rather quickly. Uh, we get to 10, which is the presidential authorization. Uh, these tend to get signed off on in batches. Uh, so, you know, you can be one of the 
lucky ones that get caught in the batch very early on. Uh, and so uh, you could have your whole entire citizenship package done within a month, uh, or it could be in one of the batches that takes, you know, unfortunately two to three months, four months. Uh, but again, this is all pretty common. Uh, you know, there's no specific timeline to say, hey, it's gonna take one month or it's gonna take two months or three months. It's gonna go back and forth a little bit depending on uh, the holidays that are taking place in Turkey, depending on the pandemic situation, depending on holidays uh, for kids. You know, all of these things are going to have an impact on the governmental offices and how quickly they're able to get things done. Uh, so once that has been submitted, we get through the 10th step, we've got the signature, your attorney will be notified uh, that per the preliminary approval has been granted. Uh, and then within two weeks, three weeks, we will receive an email uh, to arrange for the uh, fingerprints so we can receive your ID card and your passport. What we like to do is, if you're here in Turkey, obviously it's a little bit quicker to process it in Turkey, but these can be done at the closest consulate embassy, uh, let me clarify, Turkish consulate embassy in your home location, uh, so you can reach out to them. We'll help you schedule that appointment and, and get that taken care of. Uh, once those fingerprints have been completed, then within two to three weeks, you'll have uh, your passport and ID card. So I know that I ran through that very quickly, and I I know that there's a lot more uh, that needs to be done and needs to be discussed. Uh, and I, I urge you to reach out to us, ask us questions. I'll get our uh, attorney involved. We'll make sure that we give you the best answer that we possibly can. Uh, but I just wanted to give you the quick steps, the basics, so you know what to do. Understand that your documentation is the most important part. I'm going to link uh, our documentation uh, PDF in our comments. So you can download that and understand what you need. Uh, so please look below the video here. You can pull up our required docs. Uh, and then uh, that's it. So guys, I, I thank you for tuning in again this week. Uh, I know that that was kind of a, a, a quick session, a quick turn and burn on the citizenship. Uh, but any questions you have, ask them down below. Reach out to us, inquire. My WhatsApp number's on the video. Give me a shout and I'll be glad to help you out. So have a great week, guys. Until I see you soon.